hope, purpose, pleasure, all meaningless. I now walk in the shadows between worlds, and it is there I have finally glimpsed upon what lives in the dark corners of the earth. If you forget the fact that he has no memory of the last six years of his life, then Jack Walters is just your typical PI, complete with his own office and a Boston accent. At the beginning of Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth, he accepts a job that takes him to the small fishing town of Innsmouth, where his task is to find a young man that has gone missing. As you start your investigation, it becomes abundantly clear that outsiders aren't welcome here, as the inhabitants talk about you behind your back, suggest that you should leave, often, and generally just act suspicious. It's also hard not to shake the feeling that you are constantly being watched, though that might just have something to do with the fact that you are constantly being watched. After collecting enough evidence, and seeing the occasional dead body, Jack remembers that he might have left the oven on, and decides it's time to leave Innsmouth while he still has the chance. Unfortunately, the only road out of town has been closed off, leaving you with no other choice but to check into the local hotel and stay for the night. As you sleep, however, the townsfolk finally decide that they've had enough of you and your investigation, and head up to your room for a little spot of murder. It's locked. Probably bolted on the other side. He's awake in there. I can hear him moving about. Break the door down, you damn fool! With no weapons or means of attack, you have only one option. Run. No tutorials, no hints to work with, just run. You push bookcases, lock doors and jump through windows in your attempt to escape, with the angry mob hot on your heels the entire time. It's an incredibly tense sequence, as one mistake or one lapse in judgement can be the difference between life and death. Bookshelves in particular take an agonisingly long time to push, and will have you mashing on the open button so you can get past certain obstacles as soon as possible. No matter how flawless your run is going, you can almost feel the breath of your pursuers on the back of your neck. Once you finally break free from them, you really do breathe a massive sigh of relief, albeit a tentative one, as you're still in the middle of a strange hostile town, forcing you to stick to the shadows and sneak about to survive. This level is bound to frustrate many people, as it is a prime example of trial and error gameplay, causing you to fail, get caught, and try again multiple times. However, it works here because it perfectly captures the mood of the scene. You are helpless and held at a major disadvantage, and this sequence is all about battering that point home. Every room you enter has you desperately looking about for ways to slow them down and escape. All of that time spent honing your investigation skills in the first portion of the game are put to the ultimate test here. This could well have been a hassle-free sequence that furthers the plot, which has worked fine in other games, but for the tone that Dark Corners of the Earth is going for, this approach works so much better. The slow build-up and unease felt whilst playing is brilliantly utilised, making this level both explosively exciting and tense at the same time. Keep in mind that after about three hours of playing, this is the first major action set piece of the game. Furthermore, it doesn't involve grabbing a bunch of guns and shooting people, which I feel this game deserves to be applauded for. Far too often, action is equated to fighting and combat, even in the majority of survival horror games. No matter how clunky the combat system is, it is still usually the most effective way to proceed through a level. So many games have combat as a central device, why not change things up a little, and actively encourage us to simply avoid combat altogether? This isn't exclusive to horror games. In Prince of Persia Warrior Within, the most memorable sequences involved running from the Dahaka, the unstoppable monster that chases you relentlessly throughout levels. Going back to Call of Cthulhu, even in the stealth levels, there is no option to knock out your foes or perform silent takedowns. You are completely powerless, and it makes for some excitingly tense gameplay. Unfortunately, it seems that the developers didn't have the strength of their conviction, as an hour or so later, you find a gun locker which allows you to finally equip yourself. Sure, at first it's exhilarating to finally be able to fight back against these foes whom have been causing you so much grief, but it very quickly gets boring as you realise that you're just playing a below average FPS. The real shame is that we aren't even halfway through the game yet, and already the most interesting aspect has now been cast aside and replaced with mindless action that quickly gets frustrating. This really is unfortunate. If Dark Corners of the Earth ditched the rubbish combat and stuck with the low-key, slow-burning tension like what is found in the chase sequence, then it really could have been a great game. 
but as it stands, it is merely part of a great game that gets replaced with a bad one. The door will be open. They've got him. Don't let him get away. Hey folks, hope you liked that video. Be sure to check out some of my other videos and subscribe if you like. Also, be sure to follow KG Videos on Twitter. The link is below.